Hi everybody, welcome back to Drawing Faces on Fabric. I'm Lauren Volchek, and at this point, this is our final lesson. You should have your colored pencil face completed on your fabric. And you have this cute little bald-headed thing, and we gotta figure out what to do with it now. So, we're gonna work on this little project that is the, I call it the mini face quilt. Um, but there's other things that you can do with, with your uh, drawn faces that's really fun. It adds a lot of personality to something. So I've got a notebook here that I just did a reverse applique window and inserted the face in that. Or you could do the same kind of application on a tote bag or a backpack, anything like that, that you want to just sort of interject a little bit of fun. Um, I also just kind of want to remind you that I have a few things in my Etsy shop that you might be interested in. I have several of the Faces Mini Quilts in their kits. Different colors, different hairstyles, they have fun different embellishments and all of the directions for that. Um, and it, they also have one of my hand-drawn faces. So if that's something that you're interested in, or you can insert your faces that you finished in this class. Um, I also have the just simply the face so if you really loved this project and you wanted to make some more for some girlfriends or something like that but you you don't want to draw the face you can just purchase those on my etsy shop as well lauren's fiberart.etsy.com all right we're going to get going with the very you know how we pull all this together into our little mini quilt and i need you to go ahead and and get out the um the two downloadable files for this lesson there's one that's pattern pieces and there's one that's the pattern layout so while you're getting into the classroom and downloading those sheets we're going to move our camera again around behind me so that um, you can see what i'm doing all right, this sheet right here that's in front of me is your pattern pieces, and that's what you're going to want to start with. We're going to want to make um, a fusible applique of each of these pieces. We've got the shirt, the collar, her hair, her headband, and the little flower. So it's all pretty straightforward. You're just going to take your trans web, and you can do this on a light box or in a sunny window if you need to, and trace all of your pattern elements. So right here I'll get the flower. And then once you have traced all of your pattern elements onto your trans web or wonder under, you'll just simply cut out roughly the pieces and then fuse them according to the manufacturer's instructions. You'll fuse them to the wrong side of your fabric. So this bright pink is our is our flower fabric and now I've got the pattern fused onto there. And just if you've ever done fusible applique, it's just exactly the same thing. I'm just going to cut out on the line all of those pattern pieces. Um, and there's not very many. It, go, it, it will go really quick. So you're just going to cut on the line. Most of you have probably done that before. The only thing that's really critically different is your face. When you get ready to cut out your face, you want to leave a little, about a sixteenth of an inch margin between your line and where you're cutting out. So I, on this, in this case, I really don't want to cut right on the line. I want to leave a little bit, a little gap, if you will, of your skin tone fabric like this all the way around the head. And the reason for that is that is actually where you're going to sew in that little margin. You'll find some uh, thread that matches your skin tone and you'll sew in that margin. If you sewed directly on the line that you drew, you would lose your line. So when the head is cut all the way out, it'll look like this. And you just have this little um, margin of fabric all the way around it. Okay, so let's say we've got all of our we've got all of our pieces fused onto the fabric that we want for our hair and hat band and that kind of thing, and we're going to um, put them on our fabric. On your supply list, I had you get um, a square of your background fabric and then a square of fusible fleece that matches your background fabric, and you're going to want to go ahead and fuse those together. You want the glue of the fleece facing the wrong side of your fabric, and you'll press those together according to the instructions on the fusible fleece. And for a really small project like that, it, it's fabulous because then you don't need to baste. Everything is all 
um, one continuous piece and nothing's going to shift around. So once you've got your, your fleece fused onto your background, you can begin to place um, your fusible applique elements. Now remember, your face is going to be on the bottom. So what I do is I, I sort of lay the other pieces onto my base and determine let's pull this let's pull this fabric off or the paper off of your face because that's the first one that we're going to iron on okay um, so I've got my shirt on here you could lay the collar on here and just sort of get an idea I might want to center it a little bit more so she's not so close to the edge and I like to tip the head a little bit and now you're probably thinking if I if I go ahead and fuse this face onto the fabric, I'm putting my hot iron directly on all of the artwork that I did for the last three weeks, and I don't really want to do that. You want to come in with, um, you can either just use a sheet of paper, or you can use um, a Teflon sheet to protect that. So you would lay your sheet, you lay your sheet of paper over the face to protect it from the iron, and then just hold your iron on and fuse that piece um, of applique to your little quilt. Then, and I've got this other diagram that's the placement. This is exactly how I placed my quilt. If you want to copy that, that's fine. It sort of gives you a, a guideline to start as to where you want your pieces to go. So now that I, I would have my face fused on there, I just take my, um, my matching thread and with, with the feed dogs up, I just stitch really close to that edge all the way around until that applique is um, sewn all the way around. And then I do that for every piece um, on the quilt. So I'm gonna pull our sample up here and we'll see if the camera can kind of zoom in really close. And you can see, especially on this collar, you can see where the pink thread is just, you know, about a 16th of an inch all the way in. And that just adheres everything to your backing piece of fabric. I have a little stack of sequins and beads up here and if you want to add some embellishment to your quilt, all that kind of stuff I covered in my fancifications class. So you can, you know, kind of go back to that classroom and review that for instructions if you want to do a little embellishing. Alright, so p every piece you're going to do that with and just add them and stitch them and add them and stitch them until you have them all on here. Once you have all of your pieces on here, you're going to put, this is the fabric that I chose for the backing you'll put that right sides together. And essentially you're just going to sew all the way around leaving about, I don't know, a four or five inch opening. You want to leave your opening on any edge except for the one where your shirt is. So any edge will work. And then you just, you sew it a quarter of an inch all the way around, clip your corners, turn it, and then I press it so it's nice and flat. And then um, what I did was I just stitched a little ways in on the edge and that closed my opening. So my opening was over here. And now it's closed with that. And I stitch around my girl and then kind of a frame all the way around. And that's plenty. If you want it to be done at that point, it can. But otherwise, you can kind of play and practice with some of your free motion quilting and add a little bit to the design. And that's really it. That's the entire project. So I hope you really had a great time with it. Um, I hope everyone's posting pictures like crazy because we're going to be giving this away soon. Anyway, I enjoyed the classroom with all of you, and I look forward to the next one. Thanks so much.